Right now, there are no confirmed cases of the coronavirus in the state. A total of 93 have been tested through Idaho Bureau Labs. A total of 48 have been monitored, both past and present. Put that into perspective, 37 of those 48 have been cleared, and that leaves 11 currently being monitored in our state according to the most recent numbers. And this just into our newsroom, Ada County, canceling all non-essential work travel for county employees, the latest in what has been a day of precautionary cancellations and postponements in and around Idaho and the country. Here in the studio, we are very fortunate this afternoon to have the state epidemiologist, Dr. Christine Hahn, who has been very busy in the last couple of weeks. And I wanna start with this as a father, uh, and there are many fathers and mothers watching right now. How do you frame this pandemic when somebody says to you, Dr. Hahn, mm -hmm. how should I live my normal daily routine? What should I be doing? Yeah, as you just mentioned, that is changing daily. Uh, a week ago, uh, we were reassuring the public that we didn't think there was a need at that point to cancel things and to make major changes other than taking proper precautions yeah. as hand washing and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, as you've heard th this week, I think things are changing, partly because of a growing number of cases in Washington, cases in, more cases in Utah, Oregon, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. I think we are very aware people travel back and forth. It is likely the virus may be here already and we sure. just haven't detected it yet. So we're starting to say, hey, maybe it is time to try to prevent um, this virus from spreading quickly, uh, which we're sure um, is, is here or is gonna be here soon. Yeah. So we are telling people to start changing their life in a, in a way that we weren't even a week ago. We here at the television station, as you uh, uh, are as well, getting a number of questions. Um, we have viewers every single minute asking us about things, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. rattle off some of those, sure. those things. First of all, the rumors uh, that uh, St. Al's and St. Luke's right now have a patient or patients in both facilities mm -hmm. uh, that are currently being quarantined. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've gotten that question because those are swirling. Right, so um, to be clear, we do not have any positive patients in Idaho that have been diagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, we have patients who are in facilities around the state, in hospitals around the state, uh, or that have been tested today in their doctor's office where we might have tests that are pending right now at the state lab and we'll know by this evening the results. So it is possible that hospitals have patients that they're testing and to be cautious, they're putting those patients in isolation until they know the answer because they don't want to expose anybody else. So that's certainly possible. Uh, but when the test results come back and if it's negative, then they move those patients out and they put them in the regular bed, mm -hmm. that type of thing. But that kind of stuff is happening all the time in hospitals, sure. but it makes it hard to, for people to understand what's going on when they see people being whisked into isolation right. and what's going on. And that hits the rumor mill. Certainly mm -hmm. you are bracing for what no doubt, really, if you're looking at this practically, will be a confirmed case. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of time in Idaho. Correct. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not a betting person usually, but I would bet we will see a case in the coming days or weeks. It's really, um, you know, as we see it popping up around us, we know people are continuing to travel back and forth. It's only a matter of time. I want to ask you some more viewer questions. How prepared are our medical centers to treat confirmed patients? How prepared are we? Yeah, I think a, a couple things. I think we are, we have, we're a small state, you know, population wise, and we have many hospitals that, that are quite small. And we have hospitals that are large metropolitan centers. The level of preparedness for a big event like this is really varied. Mm -hmm. But because of the 2009 pandemic, because of the Ebola scare, where hospitals really started thinking about infection sure. prevention, and because of SARS back in 2003, mm -hmm. where suddenly we were saying, hey, there's some respiratory viruses going around and people started putting masks on people in the waiting right. room, started emphasizing hand sanitation. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we've come a long way. That said, hospitals are taking this time, th th these weeks, to really get ready. And I know a lot of them have been exercising, practicing protection right. and that type of thing. Uh, next question, uh, how does the testing process work? Do we have enough tests right now? You know, mm -hmm. we're getting mixed signals out of Washington. If not, when will we get them and how? Yeah, so right now in Idaho, um, up until late last week, our state public health lab was the only lab in the state that was authorized to do these tests. Mm -hmm. And they've been able to keep up with all the tests coming in. Uh, so we felt like we've been able to test the people that needed to be tested. 
we're very fortunate as of late last week, now we have three commercial labs in the region that can test Idaho patients. And those tests can go like any other tests from hospitals or clinics uh, to private sector. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we have good capacity, a lot better than we did a week ago, but we need to be testing more people. We know that it's been very frustrating for the public in general. Mm -hmm. There are people that have been sick and haven't been able to get tested. Right. I think that's changing very rapidly. Okay, uh, certain, more, uh, certain people are more at risk because of the conditions that they have. What are those? And for those people with those conditions, uh, what should they do to prevent from getting this? This viewer has asthma, for example. Yeah. Uh, should they get a spare inhaler, a uh, steroid version just in case? Mm -hmm. What's the direction there? Yeah, so the people who are at high risk that, you know, we know this mostly from data out of China, but we're starting to see the same thing in Washington State and in, and in Europe. Um, the people that are at highest risk seem to be elderly people, also people with underlying health conditions, and obviously those can overlap. People who are older tend to have more underlying health conditions. Mm -hmm. So that means lung disease, heart disease, kidney disease, uh, maybe your immune system uh, being suppressed because of being on medication after a transplant or you're on cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. Those people who have those kinds of health conditions need to take special care. A couple things that we're recommending, kind of common sense things. All the things we're saying to everybody else, do those of course, hand hygiene. But really, um, for example, trying to stay away from large groups, maybe hitting the grocery store when it's less, when it's more quiet, there right. are fewer people around, trying to avoid crowds, um, and certainly avoiding anybody who's sick. You know, I remember even when I was a kid, you, sh yeah. you know, you went to school every day whether you were, you know, sneezing and sniffling right. or not. The, right. the ethic has really flipped, and now people are saying that's not the that's not the way to go anymore. When people are sick, they need to stay home. And if you're vulnerable, you mm -hmm. need to tell pe sick people, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't be close to you right now. We should mention if you're just joining us we're speaking with Dr. Christine Hahn the state epidemiologist about the corona uh, virus pandemic and these are questions that many of you have sent us. This is a very topical spring break right around the corner. Uh, your recommendations for traveling by air, staying in hotels, eating in public places. What do you tell people about that? Yeah so this is a very highly personal decision. Sure. Um, I think there are some people that are going to want to con continue with their plans and for many places, many parts of the United States for example, they've had like Idaho very few cases or no cases. It might be perfectly safe to travel there and you know I would just bring the hand sanitizer and mm -hmm. be particularly mindful of staying away from large groups but keep up with your plans. Other people may not feel so confident and may want to cancel or postpone Sometimes the finances play a role in that too, right? Sure. Um, so it's a complicated decision. Um, we just heard yesterday from the president that travel from Europe is being banned. Right. I, I believe that Americans can still travel back and forth. I've been trying to verify that today, but I think Europeans, for example, won't be coming here. So things are changing very rapidly, yeah. um, but I think each family has to make that decision based on their own, you know, are you healthy? Um, are you, do you have any health conditions? Are, are you worried? If you're not gonna enjoy your vacation, why do it? You know, maybe it's right. time to postpone it and go in the fall or something when hopefully things are better. This viewer says, this is a silly question, but uh, what about the temperature of the water I'm washing in? Does that matter? Yeah, you know, there's no silly questions. This is a new virus and right. there's a lot we don't know about it. Um, to my knowledge, um, Th that shouldn't affect anything. You know, there's a, as you walk through the world and let's say you're around somebody with a coronavirus, you could imagine if I gotten contaminated somehow with right. it. That could be, but until it gets into your nose or mouth, we think it's not gonna hurt you. Mm -hmm. So really temperature of water, like w for your showers, washing your clothes, I don't think that's gonna make a difference. It's more about keeping your hands. Right. We don't, we don't say this enough, <laughs> keeping your hands away from your face. I think we all have a that way that we so touch our face. hard to do when mm -hmm. you're adjusting <laughs> glasses. Yep. Um, seeing a lot of news on people having the virus and being infectious while showing zero symptoms. Should I get tested for precautionary measures? Yeah, so that's been a very confusing area with this virus. There were some early reports of asymptomatic people transmitting uh, the disease. Uh, the best we understand now from the science is that that's probably not very common and that people who are asymptomatic are probably not a big source of spread. Right. So the other thing is we don't know, um, let's, say you're, let's say you're feeling good, like you or me and we go and we get tested and we're negative. It doesn't tell us much because we could pick up the virus tomorrow. So we don't recommend testing for asymptomatic people. It doesn't really help you very mm -hmm. much. Let's close with this one, Dr. Hahn. Why are we in a panic over this? 
isn't it going to eventually go through the world's population just like any of the other viruses like the flu? Yes, we're in a panic about this because it's new and the unknown is always frightening because we don't know what to expect. Right. Um, yes, it'll probably, it seems like it's gonna circulate throughout the world. Right. Um, and many of us might get it, might be just fine and go on, but none of us knows who that will be, right? It's, and, it, and, and we know there are vulnerable people that are very at high risk. I think all of us have a loved one who maybe is older, maybe has health problems, you know, maybe has a asthma or lung disease, right. and none of us want to see anything really bad happen to them. Yeah, all right, Dr. Hahn, state epidemiologist, thank you for your perspective mm -hmm. and for framing this with us. We went long form for a very good reason. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for answering all our questions. There you go. Thank you.